Hello everybody! Welcome back to Cheap Air Soft Grid Ways Homestead in the Desert. And here we are on October 2nd, 2021. And you're looking at a blue screen, right? No, you're looking at the blue sky. Why? Because things are looking up. <laughs> yeah. Ah, we're looking down again. All right. So anyway, uh, I'm out here by the uh, um, battery banks, and I want to get into something there in a little bit. Uh, but first of all, I, something I haven't done for a while, and that's some shout outs. And uh, I'm just going to do a few each time or not each time but whenever I have some open space I'm going to do some shout outs to some of my subs so that you can go over and check out their sites too and see what they're doing but uh, um, don't feel bad if you're not in this first group I just uh, randomly grabbed uh, some of the fewest uh, the newest comments that I got and jotted those down real quick so that I can give them uh, a shout out on this one all right, so first of all, we're gonna talk about uh, Blissful Acres Off Grid. How you doing guys out there? Keep up the good work. Um, maybe some of these people come over and take a look at what you're doing. Arizona High Grid, or sorry, Arizona High Desert Homestead. Yeah, check them out, or check him out. You'll, you'll be interested in what he's doing over there. Uh, Jeff and Cricket's Homestead. He likes to show you a lot of different critters from that desert. If you're interested in critters, that's the place to go. And he's got a, a little brand new addition, a cat that's on a leash, like a dog, that likes to play fetch. Imagine that. You gotta go over and take a look at that. All right, Desert Horizons, another one. You wanna go over and take a look at Desert Horizons. That's a, another good channel. And Salty Shellback. Go check out his uh, loading table. <laughs> Say, hey, Salty, how you doing, buddy? And then, last of all, solar and wind in South Texas, Roman. Okay. And the reason I saved you for last was because I'm going to address some of the last comments I got from you, and uh, that's about my inverter. And I've been talking lately that winter's on its way out here. And it has been getting cold at night, you know, down in the 40s, the upper 40s anyway. And uh, getting chilly at night. And uh, pretty soon the days will get shorter. I think it's uh, November 7th is when the, the time changes go, for those of you who have time changes. I know I don't, Arizona doesn't do that, but uh, we have, still have time change out here. And I think it's uh, November 7th, the first Sunday in November, something like that. Anyway... Um, yeah, so I was talking about doing a, uh, getting my uh, generator set up and ready so that when the days get shorter and we don't have as much sunlight and everybody's kind of predicting a really wet winter this year. I'd like to see that. It'd be really good for California and the deserts because uh, we've been really, really dry lately. Um, we're seven and a half inches below normal and... Uh, that was for last year, and we're, we're starting the new uh, rain season now, so let's hope we get some rain this year. Some of you don't want to see any more. You've seen enough, but uh, we'd really like to see it out here in the high desert in California. Anyway, um, some of the things we are discussing was getting this generator going, so for those short days, um, if we do have a whole week of rain or something like that, or even a week of uh, showers on and off, and the sky is overcast. Um, my amorphous panels will be giving me some electricity. But, you know, if I want to go out and work in the shop or something like that, I use a little bit more. Now, solar and wind in South Texas, Roman, okay, uh, mentioned that uh, I was saying I, I need a transfer switch to go between my generator, which is right here in front of me with the cover on it, my generator and my uh, panel and he was saying no you don't um, the Ames inverters already have that built into them and uh, I said well I'll have to do some more research so I today since I'm in healing mode I did some more research and I have the Ames book right here in front of me we'll get to that in a second here 
All right. Now what's going on is I have a 240 volt system. Okay, so I use uh, my my Ames inverter is a 12 volt input, 12 volt DC input, 240 volt AC output, and the reason for that is, you know, my shipping containers over there behind us, they have a lot of um, construction tools and equipment in there. I've got a milling machine and things like that that, you know, 240 volts is more efficient than uh, 120. So um, for, for large equipment like that, I wanted 240 volts. So I have it out there, I have it in my panel, and coming off of my inverter inside of here, my Ames inverter, which is a 4,000 watt inverter, I've, I'm put inputting in directly into my breaker panel 240 volts AC. So um, when I do my generator, you see this big heavy cord laying down here. Okay, so this is a 240 volt, uh, let's see, a 240 volt 30 amp um, connection, and it's twist locked. So I can put it in and lock it in so the vibration of the generator won't vibrate it out and it'll drop out like a regular 120 plug would. Okay, so I've got that on a really heavy cord that runs over to here, and that will eventually poke through the wall here and go inside, and that's where I would put my transfer switch. And then I would tie the inverter on one side of the transfer switch and the generator on the other side of the transfer switch and then the wires that come from the inverter right now, which are those right there, those go into the panel. Those would go in the transfer switch to the panel. So the, the, either the inverter or the generator could put in 240 volts AC and I would be able to power my panel at 240 volts. Now, yes, these three extra connections at the bottom here are for AC input. And the AC input is so that if you have, you're on a grid and you have AC power, you can t tie into that. And I'll show you a, a diagram that they actually give you in the book about that. All right. So, as I was researching this and I remembered why I never connected my generator directly to the inverter yet is let's get around here and they're talking about the AC wiring here okay so wiring option one is for 230 volt single phase 120 volt single phase so it's showing the AC input which is a uh, line neutral and ground output neutral line and ground okay well, that's not what I want. That's only going to give me 120 volts. So, op wiring option two, 230 volt split phase. And that's why I bought a split phase inverter, is because I wanted to be able to have 230, 240 volt split phase. So, the input is hot, hot, ground. Output would be hot, hot, neutral. Okay, so now this one is a, so you can have a 200 and 30 volt input, but you only have 120 volts output. Kind of a waste. Doesn't make sense to me. So this is the one I want, okay? So I do have the connections for this on the inverter itself, but go to the next page at the top here. Caution, wire option two and wire option three are only allowed for the following models. And they give you these models, a 24 volt model, 48 volt model, 24, oh, 24 volt model, and a 48 volt model, the 60 watt and the 50 watt. Mine is the 40 watt. That's, that's the number on mine, that's my model. So it says all others have to use wire option one, which is this one. So now remember, wire option one shows ground, line, neutral neutral line ground okay so that's that's shown a uh, 120 in and 120 out okay 
So, I don't want that. I want this one. But it says I can't have it. That's why I never did it. But let's go inside here a second. I want to show you the strange thing about it. Okay, so let me get over here. See if I can focus in. Okay. So here's my my inputs. And look, right here. Hot. Hot one, hot two, ground. Okay, so it has the setup for 240 volt input. Same as the output, hot one, hot two is the red, and neutral goes to the, that goes out to the panel. Okay, and this is a, a ground bypass. It tells you to, if you're doing right into the panel like I'm doing, to disconnect those two. They, they actually would be, normally be snapped together, because that's a ground to neutral connection. That's to keep you from getting shocked when you touch the metal panel on this if you were tied into a grid um, system with AC power coming in from, from the uh, land, from the, from the city or the electric company or whatever. Okay, so those are disconnected so, so I don't have to worry about getting the, the jolt from it. All right, so now it's, it's showing me I've got the connections here for it, but it's telling me directly in the book that I can't do that with this model. So that's a kind of a strange thing. So I'm gonna to have to get on the phone um, earlier in the day, of course, with the, and not on Sunday tomorrow, but earlier in the day, I'll get online with the uh, people from Ames and I'll say, hey, what gives? You give me the proper connections. I don't have this type of connection. I don't have uh, yeah, I don't have that type of connection. I have this type of connection line line ground line line neutral line line ground line line neutral Same here line line ground line line neutral So for two and three is the the connection unit. I've got on this um, Inverter, but they're telling me I'm not supposed to have that so anyway so here it's uh, got another warning for split phase models, which mine is. AC neutral is not required in wiring. That's why it's got the ground on this side, not a neutral. Uh, never connect input neutral to output neutral because, of course, you're going to damage the unit and you're going to also cause an electrical shock, shock hazard, and you don't want that. So anyway, that's what's going on here. Now... I told you one other thing I was going to get on here real quick before we get too late into this. Okay, here's an installation diagram. And look, look what they say. Okay, so you got grid power coming in and you got a generator power coming in. So you want to put a transfer switch in. And that goes to your panel. Okay, so I don't have grid power coming in, so this would change a little bit. But here's a panel that comes off the inverter. So the, the inverter feeds the panel or feeds a sub-panel. And then here's the, uh, eight, uh, the DC side of it. And I just ordered one of these remote switches that I could put inside the cabin. So if I have a, uh, a problem and the system pops, I don't have to go out in the rain or the cold or the snow or whatever to, to uh, recycle it and turn it back on. I can do it all from inside the cabin. This is a, a, a further advanced model. This one actually would have a, an LED display on it that uh, would tell you this, the, what the system is set at or what's going on with the system at that point. But uh, I already have a gauge inside of there telling me that stuff. So all I need is a way to be able to turn it on, recycle it, turn it on or off, or put it on power save from inside the cabin without having to go outside. So anyway... That's what's going on, and uh, I will keep you up to date on what happens with that. So this is the system I have, and uh, I'm liking it. And uh, I, should, like I said, I, I sure wish I'd have gone with the 6,000 instead of the uh, 4,000, though. They didn't have it available at the time, and I was, uh, I was in a bind. I had to get an inverter, so I had to go with the 4,000. But... For those of you thinking about buying one, 
uh, getting ready to go off grid or going to be all, all, already off grid but want to buy a, an upgraded inverter, Ames is definitely the way to go. They are a good inverter. And uh, <clears throat> mine is a pure sine wave, and it's a low frequency series, and it's split phase. And what split phase means is you have two single phase um, units inside at 120 volts. So you can power 240 volts if you want. So if I wanted to put a, a big 240 volt um, air conditioning unit on my cabin down the line, I have the ability to do that. I just have to upgrade my uh, battery bank so that I have enough power to run it when there's not enough solar. But I love it. I do really do love it. So I'll get with Ames and see what they say and I'll let you know. And uh, thanks for the information, solar and wind in South Texas, Roman. I will uh, let you know what's going on with that. That's all there is for today, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget thumbs up down there. Don't forget to subscribe and share with friends. G-Bear signing off.